Good evening, good evening, good evening, everybody. This is this is Pastor Jay and Mike Alt. I just wanted to start off in decency and in order. Um, we're going to come out of James 1 and 5. And it says, if any of you lack wisdom, you should ask God who gives generously to those without finding fault. And it will be given to you. If you're seeking a word, if you're seeking a, a, a wisdom, if you're seeking a revelation, go to God. Don't go to your friend. Don't ask your neighbor. Go to God. Because God could be able to find a pathway and give you the wisdom how to get out of situations, how to get through closed doors, to be able to make a way out of no way. God has the plan for you. You just have to speak with them. Amen. Amen. Dear Father, thank you, God, for this day. Thank you for bringing us to this day, God. Despite of the pandemic, despite of everything that's happening, we just thank you. We glorify you. God bless this platform so that we can be able to reach somebody today and say something that could be able to empower, to, to give wisdom, to give knowledge, to plant a seed of you, God. God, we just thank you. We love you. Expand the territory of Anointed Radio. Expand everything that we're trying to do to be able to bring you to people's hearts, God, to bring you to people's households, God. God, we thank you. We glorify you. We give you all the glory and all the praise. We ask you to touch everybody under the sound of my voice from the top of their head to the sole of their feet so that they can be able to, to get the change that they've been asking for, that they can have the deliverance, they can have the breakthrough and the financial prosperity that could come, that they've been asking for, the healing in their body, the, the mended relationship with their family. God, we ask you that all in Jesus' precious name. Amen. 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 This is Pastor Jay. And like always, I got something to say. You can follow me at Anointed Jaylon on Instagram and Twitter. And you can uh, follow me on Facebook at Jay Calhoun. Um, in the absence of my co host, you could go follow Chris, uh, Chris Johnson at Sing Chris J or go to his website at um, singchrisj.com where if you need graphic design, if you need t-shirts, he can do it. Um, another person to check out is Dr. Marvinetta Clay. Um, she got her new song that we'll be playing uh, today. God is so good. Um, her new single, and then you can go get Worship Forever as well. Um, make sure you go follow her on all social media platforms and check out DW with the DW Experience every Monday at 7 p.m. Our guests, our uh, permanent guest um, uh, co host, and Chiquita Andrews with uh, un Train to Be Unbroken. Um, book. I think it's the author book. She's going to kill me for killing it. But tonight we have from the Gibson. Uh, Dem Gibson Media Group, Crystal and Howard Gibson, everybody. Hello, hello, hello. Hi. <laughs> hey, everybody. So I'm going to start off with a Pastor Jay icebreaker question. And this icebreaker question is going to be so hard. <laughs> Not really. What's your favorite Kool-Aid? Great. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Ditto. Grape? Grape. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so y'all, so already you guys are showing sibling vibes. You guys are brother and sister. So yeah. So who's the oldest? I am. She is. I know the struggle. I have an older sister too. 14 <laughs> months older. 14 months. 14 months. Oh, so you, you guys are close in age. Mm -hmm. Yes. So yes, speaking very so much. Speaking of your guys' uh, early childhood background, where are you guys with hometown and where do you reside now? Washington, D.C. We're born and raised from Washington, D.C. Uh, right now, Crystal's still in the D.C. area and I just relocated to Atlanta um, just recently before all of the, the riots or whatever you call those things going on. But um, yeah, it's uh, we're from D.C. and we started pretty early. You know, we, we started... Uh, in this film business uh, at home, and uh, it took off from there. And uh, we feel like we've been working for over three decades together. So this is just, you know, something new to be able to do this together in a in a national way. You know, to kind of come up with our kooky ideas and uh, all the things we used to talk about when we were kids to now be able to 
see those come to pass is, is just absolutely amazing. God is good. Amen. Mm -hmm. So I don't want to leave you out, Crystal. You have anything to add on to that? Um. It, he pretty much summed it up. I mean, we, we were in the same household, so my, my story is going to be the same as his, you know, ditto. Uh, <laughs> but, yeah, um, you know, we started out when we, when we were little with our dad, bringing home um, a VHS camera and showing us how to work it and then telling us not to break it. And so, you know, while everybody else was, you know, outside playing in the streets, we had a video camera making home movies, um, that type of thing. And then as we grew up, um, we began, you know, uh, PA and production assistant uh, on sets, and we just took everything in. We absorbed everything to, um, you know, gradually moving up the ranks as we moved along these uh, past 30 years. And here we are as executive producers. And so it's great. So I have to ask, what was the spark that says, I'm gonna take it to the professional level? in your life? Well, for me, it was when I uh, saw the movie Color, The Color Purple. Mm. I was a little, <laughs> that came out in 1985, so I was around 12. So by this time we had done plenty of home films, but it was just fun for us. Mm -hmm. And then um, I was also an avid reader. So when I saw that book um, translated to film, I was like, uh, I'm, I'm absolutely gonna be a filmmaker. Yeah. And I think for me, which Krista, you remember, uh, when Michael Jackson released the, his video Thriller, mm. um, he, it was a national release. Uh, it was through CBS, I remember everything. And uh, right after that, they did a making of Thriller. And mm -hmm. that captivated me. And uh, I begged my dad to go buy uh, the VHS copy of it and so I could watch the making of Thriller. And I used to watch that thing every single day, every mm -hmm. department. I want to know everything about how this video was created. And so that really much, I think that was the original spark of that. I want to do this professionally. And it captivated me in that way. And I, and I jumped in since that point. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what would be one thing that you would say to someone that's trying to follow your shoes in filmmaking um, as a word of wisdom? Um, you know, first and foremost, that, that God is your source. Mm. Um, you have to know that because in this particular bu business, it can be very difficult. Um, relationships are essential. And so sometimes you don't know who to call, what to do. Um, you might have a, a certain talent, um, but you have to keep God as your source and depend on him because really the doors were open. And, you know, be active. Um, I would say if you really want to get into the film industry, um, you need to be on sets. You have to be on sets, you production assistant, whatever. You have to learn this uh, business, you know, so that when the door does open for you, you can walk straight through with confidence. You have to be uh, prepared once that opportunity comes around to you. Okay. Absolutely. Studying, studying, studying. Never stop learning. Mm. This this business is constantly evolving. Right now, in the midst of the pandemic, the film industry as we know it has shifted and changed into technology. We're all having to learn how to uh, maneuver right now. I mean, all of us globally right now, um, things are shifting. So right now is the best time to get in to educate yourself on the film techniques that are happening, that are emerging themselves. My sister and I are uh, forward thinking and we're uh, pushing into technology, built into our filmmaking processes, just so that we can maintain in the COVID safe environments. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, and we're doing things differently right now. People want to get in this business. You need to know not only the technique of the film business, but now how to operate safely and to produce content within this uh, pandemic time. Uh, right now, Crystal and I, I tell you, uh, you know, California is pretty much shutting down and we've been shooting in L.A. Uh, and, and I think that now we're having to find new alternative locations and states and cities to do this in uh, where they don't necessarily have the infrastructure. Right now, I'm in Atlanta. It's the natural fit to keep going. But it's, it's happening. You know, this this mm -hmm. industry is shifting. And uh, but the technology is here. The information is there. 
and uh, anybody can make their films. Just keep going, you know? This is the time to learn. This is the time to experiment. Go get your cell phones, you know, turn on YouTube and come up with a good idea. Take a couple of writing lessons out of these little YouTube or master classes that are out there. My sister and I are actually developing workshops next month. We'll talk about that later. But uh, yeah, I say this is the time now. Right now, learn. Amen. Okay, so I, I have to ask because you went there. So, so many people are like, is it like back in the day when you get on the bus, you know, um, and go to LA and go to New York and, and go after the arts? Now, do you see that still being the same after COVID with, um, with the LA, New York gatekeeping, as people would say? Um, eventually, you're going to have to be able to move around as you know long as as howard and i have been in this business you know we've been at um a certain level doing it and i wanted to push past the, the level that i was at so i literally went to la um a couple years back i stayed in an airbnb um in a house with people I didn't even know <laughs> and strategically placed myself to be around executive producers and, you know, going on sets. And then, you know, shortly after that, um, I'm given the opportunity to do a movie. Now I understand um, COVID is now in play, but you have to figure out somehow, some way to cultivate uh, relationships with network execs. Mm -hmm. You have to be able to do that. Because yeah. other than if you don't, you're just a needle in a haystack. Yeah. So if there are productions going, you need to get there. Though you need those relationships. I, I would say yes. Yeah. So the point of that is definitely L.A. and New York are still epicenters when it comes to relationship building and when it comes to getting to the pipelines of platforming and the distribution. But the filmmaking process can happen anywhere. And in mm -hmm. fact, they're looking for people to do these films all over the world. I mean, right now, look at Netflix. They're, they're going after, you know, African art audiences, you know? Mm -hmm. So they're looking for uh, people to talk, you know, from their perspective, from where they are, you know, Cincinnati, Ohio, you in Vegas, talk right there, you know, give us the stories. And I think the platforms and the people in LA are looking for the new innovators who can get content done in the midst of pandemic. They're mm -hmm. looking for new ideas. They're looking for new opportunities. Uh, my sister and I were blessed a little early on this thing. And we are forefront in how to maneuver inside of the COVID and get things going. Uh, and so there's a, a lot of new skill sets that you have to you know, learn on it. But right now, I, you can make a movie anywhere. And now you can talk to people through social media. You can talk to people through um, all these open forums, including this. And I think, it, you know, if it's great, it'll get back to it. Right. Okay, so um, one thing I have to do, go ahead um, before I forget and say shout out to Apostle Vero Howard um, yes. because hey, of her, she was able to set this interview up, so we just thank you so much here in Las Vegas for her. She's done so much here at Anointed Radio. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to table the rest because we're going to get real deep into you guys' projects and some stuff that you guys are coming up with, but I had one question. I'll make it quick. So, um, what was your very your your most memorable project you've worked on, and what did it teach you? Um, my most memorable, I would say for me, um, it's her 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 only choice. That's my um, my first feature film that I wrote and directed which launched the BET Her Network, which wasn't that long ago. Um, but that was like one of the first times I was on set without my brother. Mm. Um, and you know what I learned that, that as much as he and I worked together, um, that I was really able to push through on my own. Mm -hmm. However, we're still better together. <laughs> mm -hmm. We're still better together. But um, that was the first time where I, I looked around and I had this crew and I didn't know any of those, anybody on set um, aside from my assistant. Um, but, uh, you know, I had to really just step up to the plate and make it happen. And um, I, I, I became a lot confident after that film, um, which went on to uh, 
get nominated for the International uh, Satellite Awards. And after it launched on BT Her, um, it was picked up by Netflix for a year. Now it's back on BT Plus. But, you know, I learned that, that, that I could do all that work was not in vain. Hey, Amen. Mm. That was mm. deep. She was mm. dropping gems in that. Okay. Mm. Yeah. See, that's because a, that's my that's, sister. That's I don't say this. Power. She said, without my brother, we still good together, but I was still able to do it. That was powerful. <laughs> it is a powerful thing because I told my sister, now you're ready. Let's go. Right. You know, and there's no limits into what we can create. You know, um, I kind of took on a different path um, very early on. I, I stayed out out west um, uh, and uh, I just kind of developed uh, very early on by getting with the right people, the right place at the right time. You know, those names are iconic now. Um, and I was able to just get with those people and get their music videos done. So I learned a lot. I learned a lot from the Tupacs and the Biggies of the world and just seeing their, their environment and how they had to cultivate and and be but regular what people. Your, what was your most your most memorable project though? Your most memorable. My what most memorable one? Yeah. Um, so yeah, my most memorable one. I'm gonna say Double Cross season one. <laughs> After 29 years of being in the business, this experience uh -huh. has been unlike anything else because it was my family. And and I and yeah. I looked around and and I, and I used to walk around because I've I've done a lot, but I used to walk around and look and say, "This guy, I've known him or her since I was ten. Mm. This is my old high school buddy right here. I got my old college buddy. I, what is going on here? I got my cousins. I got everybody here, and we were able to produce at this level." and give it to the audience, and it shows our heart and our passion of what my sister and I come out of our head, that is more fulfilling than any of the big names I've ever been with. You know, I worked hard in learning, uh, and, and those were definitely incredible lessons, but this one by far is a fulfillment, a harvest season for me. And I, t I told someone, I said, man, sometimes it takes 29 years to be an overnight success, you mm -hmm. know? And, uh, and that's what we're living with, and people are just finding out about us, but I'm great, man. This great come from a lot of years <laughs> <laughs> in this business, <laughs> for sure. And God has blessed me and, and, and cultivated um, a union and a bond that is is absolutely incredible. You know, season two, I had my father painting sets and helping us build. I had my children, Chris and her children, on a set in front and behind the camera. My little sister is in the scene and, and is one of the lead actresses, and she killed it. You know, mm -hmm. and and uh, we are, we're working with uh, Maryland State Un um, an Arts and Humanity Program. Where we have uh, helped out about 40 people now. Our number keep going higher, higher, yeah. 40 or 50 right now of uh, coming in for the very first time, not ever having the opportunity to get to a Hollywood film set. Uh, and uh, and they were in front of the camera. They were behind the camera. In fact, Gil Nelson, shout out to Gil Nelson. He's one of the, the, the uh, he was a playwright and he was doing plays in the region. And uh, he said, man, I need to get into the film business. And, and we cultivated him, you know, Crystal and I really cultivated him into this thing. And Gil in season two directed an episode, mm. you know, he did an awesome and, job, awesome no. job, awesome job. Okay, now we, so, yeah, we had a lot of interns on season one and we're like, you want to know how, how, how to make a film? You need to be on set. And so we invited uh, interns from D.C. who would never, never otherwise be in Hollywood on a soundstage. And they all came out and they shadowed us and they interned and we taught them. And like I would say with Gil Nelson, he stayed right beside us because he wanted to, to learn how to direct. He directed stage plays, but he did so awesome that we actually gave him an episode on season two. And he, and he rocked it. He rocked, he rocked it. it. And you know, and, and, and so many other in front, you know, uh, Nurse Bryant. It, I want you guys to check it out. But like Dr. Centron, Nurse Bryant, Nurse Rachel, uh -huh. all these people who have leading roles in this show, who were killing it in season one, are all from the DMV. All from people who we we have just said and we promised to them. We saw their talent and we, and we made through with it. God blessed us with it, and and we gave it back right away. And so that's what we've done in season two, and we'll continue to cultivate that. 
and build it because we're finding incredible new talent, fresh talent. Mm -hmm. I mean, amazing talent, blowing your mind talent. And I'm, <laughs> I'm just amazing that they're all working out at the highest level and at the highest scale to what we're giving. And then we're just hoping to share that with the world and, and to know that this is a family owned business. We're doing it, man. We're doing the COVID, we're doing this pandemic. Um, I'll tell you, we were in Los Angeles. It was uh, fires outside that had smoke, so we couldn't breathe. Inside the buildings, it was 110 degrees. Inside the set, it, it was another 30 degrees hotter. And then we had masks on the whole time, sweating right. our shirts, trying to make this thing happen. We had the COVID cops around us for real, you know, yes. and threatening <laughs> to shut us. And they weren't out a part of our staff. It was like an outside company to come in, really like looking at us saying, you have to do this. And we had to go into zones. We had to take COVID tests three times a week, which was grueling. Uh, we couldn't get in our buildings unless our temperature and our COVID was clear, you know, and sometimes it took hours for us to even get into our own building to shoot. Uh, so we went through a lot and, and I'm just thankful that we have uh, uh, January 14th, we're going to uh, deliver you guys uh, double cross season two. I, I can't wait. You know, I'm just happy that's happening. Amen. So we're going to talk about Double Cross more after the music break. Thank you, Howard. Thank you, Miss Crystal. We're going to go into a music break right quick. Uh, give us a little break to reset. And then at, before you do that, if you're listening, I'll need you to go share, tag your friends. If you're an actor, the next part's going to be for you. So I need you to go ahead and share this, tag your friends, and make sure you go follow Anointed Radio on all social media platforms at LV Anointed Radio. But we're going to go ahead and start with one of our very own new single. It's called God is So Good by Dr. Marvinetta Clay. And after that, we're going to play a few another mix by Matt Simmons, and then we'll be coming back. So you guys stay there, stay tuned, stay blessed. And this is God is So Good. How I many you know that God is good? He's good all the time and all the time. God is good. You gotta believe that for yourself. You said in your word that the good life was a part of your plan. Sometimes life would throw a curveball and Make it hard to understand Now why do bad things happen To good people Something no one can explain But I've learned to trust And never doubt Your love will never change He's good all the time and all the time, God is good. Whoa, whoa, whoa. He's so good. He's good all the time. All the time, God is good. Yeah. Whoa, Yesterday I got a call from a friend He said he was hurt He said that everything was alright with him But with a twist things got worse Now why do bad things happen to good people? Something no one can explain But I learned to trust and never doubt your love will never change. He's good all the time, all the time. God is good, yeah. Oh, oh, oh. he's so good. Oh, oh, he's good all the time, all the time. He's the Alpha 
in your house, way. I can say any made away. Nah, I don't do it my way. Yeah, yeah, I do it God's way. Y'all way. Yeah, yeah, that way. Yeah, yeah, that way. One way to God is the only way. Do you know, you know, you know. Shout out to the man, when you can, you can. Let me put you on, he sits on the throne, yeah. If you know, you know. 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 If you know, 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 Hey, man, if you know, you know by Matt K. Simmons, make sure you go ahead and get that track and make sure you go get Dr. Marvinetta Clay's song, God is so good that was some two fire new tracks coming at you from anointed radio make sure you go download that and you if you know you know you're gonna go ahead and go download it amen so we are back and we're coming to the part two this is the part i told you was gonna be juicy we're gonna talk about the projects we're gonna talk about upcoming things that they're gonna have because they are way makers and opportunity setters because they already did it in the dmv where they already doing opportunities and they're just gonna go higher and higher and make more and more opportunities guys so let me just say i was grooving to that song <laughs> <laughs> if you know you know <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that, that song is fire. Make sure you go download, put that in your playlist. You know, all my Christians out there, that's the song you get when you're working out. You can just be that's working right. out. Because if you know, you know, you can hit that Crazy. set. Go ahead and get that <laughs> And if you want to laugh, I want to just throw that out there. Put a little plug in. Go ahead and go to my Facebook page at Jay Calhoun. Or go to my Instagram at Anointed Jaylon and go see my latest sponsorship where I sponsored the Big Scary Gym, y'all. Make sure you check out Big Scary Gym in Henderson, uh, Henderson, Nevada, where you can see me and my punching skills. You're gonna have to watch my whole the whole video. The whole video, you gotta watch the whole thing before you judge me. Okay. So <laughs> I, had, I had my should night punch, right? I was doing it. And then you know, I said if you if you're all in the videos dancing, all and I was saying it to the dummy, and the dummy didn't like what I was saying. You gotta watch to see the dummy's response. So make sure you go to my Instagram at anointed Jaylon or go to my Facebook at Jay Calhoun and you can be able to see the whole video. It it'll it'll make your night. Because it made my cool. making it. Cool. So cool. <laughs> one thing I wanted to say coming from the actor side, and, and I know as being an actor, I always want to know the director's mindset. So I want to just say this. What is a word of advice that you would give an actor that you see too many times in auditions or in castings that you're like, okay, this is something that if you did this, you'll be better prepared. Um, I think when it comes to uh, auditions, I, I obviously know that that people are nervous. Um, and so I, I always I, I take that in into consideration. Um, but with that said, if you could, could be as natural as possible, and I tell people to rehearse in the mirror first, you need to know what you look like um, or uh you know, you need to rehearse every little natural moment thing that you're doing. As I'm talking, I might be moving my hands or things like that. A lot of times in auditions, I see people that, you know, they're like frigid like this and they, you know, try to do their lines. Mm -hmm. But um, I like the, the that natural uh, mm -hmm. acting, that natural talent. And I do know how to overlook if someone is just nervous I, I i can look past that um and then to work on their tones when they're talking to make it sound more natural because they'll tend to uh you know go up in their dictation hi my name is chris you know that type of thing they don't realize that they're doing that so they you know if they have that natural presence um I absolutely love it and i'm known for casting people that are not known mm. i love it I love putting people on camera that um, nobody's ever seen before. People with that that raw talent. So that's my advice: practice in the mirror before you do your auditions. <laughs> okay. Look deep into the role too. You know, try as much as you can to try to become the character. You know, 
um, and you just try to get into it. Like every time I, I read a story, you know, I take my mind and I just try to like fully visualize what it is, you know, and try to jump into the experience, you know. So I, I, I tell people, you know, research again. I'm good with it, you know. It's just like research, man. Research. I love researching, man. Research everything, you know. If there's a character that you don't fully understand, that you feel like uh, that you can do, research the character. A lot of great actors uh, immerse their themselves into the role by becoming the person, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, so they they research the, the you know those backgrounds. They find themselves talking to people. Sometimes it's so little nuances that you would never know if you didn't go around those kind of environments and you know kind of experience it for yourself. You know, I remember Morgan Freeman once told me uh, um, uh, Mean Streets and how he got the role. Uh, it was a pit role, but he ended up getting nominated and he did that role because he said uh, he used to, uh, where he was in New York, he used to look down, uh, down below and he would see a pimp and some prostitutes there. Mm. And he would, he would yeah. lean in, he would lean in. He could never hear what the pimp is talking to the prostitute. And he thought to himself, I've never seen a pimp do that because I can't hear him. Then he said he went downstairs and got as close as he can get to him. Until the man said, what are you here for? Do you need my money? But he said he couldn't hear him at all. But it, it made the woman do exactly what she said. And she ran away. So he said that when he went to his first audition, he heard people in the audition. Hey, my man, all the cliche stuff that they saw in black exploitation. And when he walked in, no one knew who he was. He did not have on loud colors, he said. And he was unassuming. And he walked up to the lady and he whispered in her ear and shook her so hard she didn't know if he was a real pimp or not <laughs> you know and because she didn't know who he was right and he did it to her ear and it quivered it made her quiver you know oh you know and, and he walked away that's how Morgan Freeman got that gig you know and he, and he said and he said that um he saw a pimp he said I never heard a pimp I never heard him and when he went in there that was his study on something that mm -hmm. don't just go jumping on it and try to go cliche on us. We we know what's natural. We know what's real. And and so those roles that really dig into something that makes people uncomfortable, you know, the, the actor has to get uncomfortable. The actor has to be willing to be embarrassed and just become that role. I love that. I feed off of it. We I had an, uh, an actress in Double Cross season one. Her name is Cami Middleton. And um, we had actually talked to uh, some known actresses for the role, but her audition came in through um, a website called Backstage.com. If actors mm -hmm. are listening, that's a good tool. And I sat and I watched her audition, and she was playing a, a villain in season one, and she scared the mess out of me. Um, <laughs> we thought she was for real. We were like, oh, I think she does that for real at home. <laughs> you know, she gave the character like a purse uh, because it was an older woman. I, I didn't it call was. for a purse in the script, but she 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 dressed dressed apart. She had her purse, and you know, she scared the mess out of me. And but she won the role. I casted her over known actors. I'm telling you, I'll do it. And um, when she came to set. I didn't know, you know, what what to think. I hadn't even talked to her that much until we actually got on set because we were so busy. And I remember I walked up to her and I said, "This is a superhero movie. You're the Joker. Go." And I <laughs> walked away. That's all I said to her. And I mean, we yo uh, action, and she killed that role. And then she looks at us. She was like, "How's that?" Like she's the sweetest person. Sweetest person. The sweetest person, you would not know that uh, if you just, because she's so good at being a villain. Um, but she, she was amazing. Her audition was amazing. Um, yeah. And I like that with actors. They, they may think about what is this character wearing? You know, they may, I had girls auditioning to play a teenager um, for Double Clark Cross season two. I wound up casting the one that actually put a book bag on Mm. She thought she thought to put a book back. It was a scene because she was going to school and she was talking to her dad. But nobody else did that. 
you know, they just did an audition and talked to the camera, but she really embodied it. And I not really got to see her. Like she's fiddling with the book bag and, you know, that type of thing. So those things help as well. Yeah. I just, you know, you know, another great example when it comes to, you know, really diving into a role. I mean, look at Tyler Perry, you know, he gets his fame out of, uh, of characters that he saw growing up. Uncle right. Joe and Medea. You know, and all he's doing is mimicking what he saw growing up. And it's endless because he saw it every day. He knows exactly how to respond to every situation. And I say to people, pull from that because Cammy, I asked her because she, her, the way she carried the role was scary. And we say cut and she's completely opposite. And I said, where did you get this from? Because you are really doing it. And she was giving us nuggets that we didn't even ask for to direct her. She's giving us these moments. And I'm like, oh, yeah. And she says, I saw it around me. I'm just giving you what I grew up around. And, and you know, mm -hmm. this is my auntie, and this is my little uncle right here. And this is that. And, and so you take those things, and those are the authentic things I think that we look for, embody the character, and come up with the original things and then step into the role all the way. We know you're scared, we know you're nervous, step into the role anyway. And what else? I, you know, we're talking about Cami Middleton because she's an um, aspiring actress, right? Um, and so she's she's not a veteran to this thing, but I mean she just straight killed it, and she was also fearless. If you could find a way to 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 get rid of that fear, and you know all actors have different methods of of how they do that. No no way is a wrong way, but if you could get rid of that fear once that camera comes on, well unless you're supposed to be afraid, <laughs> <That's> <laughs> right. what, that may help you if the if the the character is supposed to be afraid. But if you can uh, get rid of that, because you never know who's watching you. You never know. And you got to try. You got to push out. You might come across executive producers like my brother, where we'll cast you strictly off uh, the talent if we like you. Same with music, when we put music on our soundtracks. Um, and we do have Grammy Award winning um, producers doing our uh, music supervising. But if we hear a song from someone, we call them up, hey, put this on the track. <laughs> like it's really just that, yeah, it's yeah, just that absolutely. simple. We're the bosses. So, you know, we have autonomy to do things like that. And because we come out of this film in industry from the bottom, we know what the struggle is like is real. And so I will definitely pay attention to um, aspiring actors or people uh, um, who are uh, aspiring musicians, people who are aspiring to be around the camera, you'll get my attention. So to speak, because you said aspiring so much, I have to play off what you said with expiring. What expired Double Cross? Aspired. Um, I, I my, said, brother, yeah, my, my brother, my brother and I, our relationship. Um, if you look behind him in uh, the the painting behind him. Done by Kamiko Robinson, who's a great painter. We even did it with artists. She's a she's an artist out of the DMV, um, and we had her put some some of her pieces in um, Double Cross as well. But uh, the relationship of uh, with me and my brother inspired that. They are a set of fraternal twins in the show. Howard and I are not twins, but we've been called twins since we were little. And sometimes we just don't even correct people. It's just like, yeah. <laughs> you know <what> I mean? <laughs> and even, you know, when we tell them we're not twins, they still call us twins. On, on, the, on the set, um, our set, our crew calls us twins, the dynamic duo. Um, mm. We think alike. Uh, we'll say things at the exact same time in the exact same tone. <laughs> right. with being, like the disposition and attitude. <laughs> um, and so, yeah, I took the relationship between he and I and, you know, we put this story together and um, I amped them up. Mm. You know, they're vigilantes uh, who fight against uh, child trafficking and, you know, they will rescue children uh, by any means necessary. Um, Howard and I, uh, we have never killed anyone. <laughs> 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 I'm glad we you clarified that. I'm glad do. this is not a documentary. Never <laughs> I never <laughs> thought about <laughs> it. No, we're good. <laughs> no, but uh, yeah. So you know, that's that's where we got the story from. Yeah. Okay. So um, one thing I would want to ask is, so now with season two, what are we to expect? It's premiering on the 14th. What are we to expect? How? More in more in depth 
story, deep story, um, deep story when we're talking about human trafficking and the operation of it and uh, and the generational curse that, you know, causes it and how it perpetuates. Also, we're going to dive into relationships, man. Everybody's home and pandemic, you know, and relationships, uh, you know, hit a new plateau and understanding each other and information and just like, some 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 families slow down and and their their usual life slows down and now they have to reevaluate who they are and and uh, and to, to, together as couples and and I think we um, touch a lot of things that are very uncomfortable topics uh, in, in our creative way but we we dive into some very serious serious topics there that I think uh, hopefully will resonate true. Uh, and and uh, we're going to introduce to a new level of double cross. Yeah, for sure. Okay. So I, I wanted to ask, um, was it coming up with season two? What was the main thing? Because I know with a lot of writers, a lot of writers get get so deep into the script that some things do not make it into season two. Was mm. there a lot of scenes that did not make it into season two? Um. No, um, the way um, so there, there's there's certain ways that people write. Some people may write um, outlines uh, and treatments, some things of that sort. Um, I don't write that way. I just write off off the top of my head. Gotcha. Um, there's no wrong way to do it. That's just the way I do it. And um, so I'm literally coming off the dome. So mm -hmm. everything that's moving is making sense mm. and so i'll very rarely write a scene and then go back out and take it out i'll maybe change dialogue gotcha. maybe somebody says something different but the the scenes no now with that said that's the writing aspect now there's always going to be Shooting three aspect. types of three <laughs> there's going to be three <laughs> types of films you do Always, it's the one you write, the one you shoot, and then the one you edit. Edit, thank you. It's gonna be three different products. And so I wrote <laughs> a certain script, but then once you get on set, and it just depends on how your set is flowing, which Howard and I had um, a difficult time shooting uh, with COVID because it pushed us back a lot. And so when I'm looking at the time and it's like, oh my gosh, we got to wrap out. I'm a stickler on that. I'll walk around. I'll tell everybody, put the equipment down. We're done. You know, that type of thing. Cause you go into penalties as you go over. Gotcha. And um, so then I'll grab the script if we really don't have time and I'll say, hand me the script. And then I'll go through and I may take some scenes out just because we don't have time to shoot them. And then you go to edit and then some things that you shot, it just doesn't make the cut. So always three types of films. Yep. And, and you see why? Hmm? I wanted to tell the people, and this is why you need to be in their master class, because she just gave you a whole class breakdown. If anybody out there was looking for film writing, that's some people pay for that. So I just want you to know, you guys need to know what they're doing in their master class, because that was some gems dropping <laughs> the game for you. And you're not even on set. See, you just on anointed radio listening. You was able to hear the whole process from writing to shooting to editing. So bam, there it is. So yeah. I have to ask about your future projects. You guys are doing great. You guys are um, on all black network now. Mm -hmm. And, um, you guys are doing about to do Netflix and BT her and and BT and all those good things. What are your future projects <laughs> that you could well, talk about? The the next one that I can talk about is um, a Christmas film for BET, and um, I'm directing that. I wrote it, and um, my brother uh, my brother also has another company called Level Up, where he does the visual effects. And so we're going to be um, teaming up with that. Um, and that's going to be around March. Um, after that, uh, we should be going into season three. You always got to get that official season three green light first. Um, right. 
Mm-hmm. And then after that, we've talked to so many people. Um, some, I guess I can, I don't know if I can say who we've talked to, uh, but we have uh, collaborations coming up. Um, yeah, yeah. With A-list. Uh, A-list, A-list talent, A-list actor, uh, A-list directors and writers whom we all grew up with in an amazing way. So I'll they, just say this. If go you ahead. listen to part one of the interview. You did say you said it. The, the movie that I watched that oh, yeah. there you go. there's a clue the future. That's there's a, a quiz. company person. Bam. Zoom her call. favorite, her favorite movie. They contacted us. There you that go. Company, Look, listen Zoom, again. Zoomed me, and um, they want to do a collaboration. So it's, yeah. it's some top people. So I can't say yet because you know in this film industry you have to sign contracts. Mm-hmm. Things have to be worked out. But it's been so it's been overwhelming. Um, the amount of executives it's crazy because you you'll be in this industry and nobody calls you mm. and you're just like how am i gonna get my phone to ring okay i gotta go out to la I have to stay in the airbnb I have to strategic, strategically place myself and then all of a sudden the phone is ringing and everybody wants zoom meetings and they just want to pick your brain they you know and work with you and it's 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 amazing um it's been so many of them. So we do have projects down the pike. I can't say this. Everybody has called me. They want all my stuff. Mm. So it's, it may turn That's out to be. favor right there. Yeah. It, it may turn Incredible out to be a, a, a bidding war, for lack of a better term. Mm. Um, because I have a, a couple of networks that both want the same project right now. And so... We'll see. <laughs> and it may be a master class, you know, maybe something in the master class and how, you know, we strategically move. I mean, I think it's something that uh, I would like to tell, you know, young African-American filmmakers and how to move and how to understand contracts and, and situations in front of you. It's really important. So once you got the film done, guess what? It's a whole level, whole nother level, you know, and, and, and my brand and love my level studio and level up. I mean, so this is what we cultivate. This is what we understand on the business spectrum and on the technology spectrum to try to help cultivate, you know, ownership and product uh, and is really, really trying to just kind of create a sustainability and a growth uh, uh, into your career path. And so that's what Crystal and I are doing with them Gibson's brands and my, and, and my, and my visual effects brand. So and then we want to educate. We want to grow and uh, we want to grow with other creators and constantly find new. But. That's it. You know, Chris is very detailed. Y'all can tell we got workshops coming up in February. We're going to give you the gems because this is real world, you know. And yeah, everybody's moving. asking for those workshops. So Yeah, everybody get in there and, and you guys need to know how to move inside of this new ecosystem because it has changed completely. Yeah. And, you know, and, and, and there is no movie theater. You know, there's no monetization in the movie theater and everything's going now streaming. So all the money is being kind of reevaluated. The business models are being shifted. California is actually losing more work uh, because of the COVID scares and uh, all the unions. And because, uh, you know, films, everybody has to touch. It's like hundreds of people moving around and uh, technology has to take, take precedence right now. So we're in the forefront of that uh, with our visual effects pipeline, virtual production pipeline. So um you'll see more from us definitely uh and we're in the trenches right now to help out uh in, in a major way uh and hope hopefully we can communicate uh and entertain you know that's our hope okay so where should everybody follow you so they can know when audition notices are coming out when your master class next class where can they follow you and see all your updates um the best place to follow us is on uh instagram um, we're on there quite often throughout the day. Um, you can find me at I am Crystal Gibson. Just look on the screen. That's how you spell my name. I am Crystal Gibson. And my brother's is Howard's Journey. And um, yeah, we're there. And our film company, Dim Gibson's Films. Um, and that Dim Gibson's Films is probably the best way to DM um, for information about 
upcoming projects or casting, or if you have music you want us to listen to, um, because we have a team of producers. It's not just Howard and I. Um, so uh, it'll get to the right person that way. Right. Yeah. So DM the Dim Gibson's films on our IG when we make the announcements and our team will definitely check it out. Amen. Well, everybody, that is the Dim Gibson Media Group with Miss Crystal and Howard Gibson, everybody. And one thing I have to say on the behalf of Anointed Radio here in Las Vegas is thank you for coming on the show. We really appreciate it because, you know, you spent the most valuable thing that you have, and that was time. So we just thank you for coming on. And any way that we can help you, pull my card and I will come and help any way I can. Well, we'll be in Vegas soon. We're coming. We might be coming to Vegas. To Vegas. You well, know, what a production. Well, well, we got you. We but got for us. now, you could help us by watching Double Cross Season 2, premiering January 14th on the All Black Network. So Amen. Say, mm -hmm. say one more time, anybody in the back that might miss that. Uh, Double Cross Season 2 premieres January 14th, that's this Thursday, on the All Black Network. It was formerly UMC. They just rebranded and changed their name. So, yeah, they're running a promotion um, for 30 days for a, a free subscription. So get in there now. And if you have not seen Double Cross Season 1, you can see that via the All Black Network or on Amazon Prime. Amen. There it goes. Or through but Apple TV+. Plus. <laughs> There you go. Or Roku. Or Roku. Or Roku. Like, all over the place. Just okay. get on your TV, hit search, and type double cross. We'll pop up. Got you. So y'all heard it. Make sure you go and follow them. Make sure you follow their social media. Make sure you go watch season one. Get ready for the 14th because the 14th is coming in two days, y'all. Get exactly. excited. So that means you could binge all tomorrow. And then yes. on Thursday, see episode one, season two. That oh, it's a two episode drop on Thursday. Yep. She keep throwing two gems. Episode drop. Two yes. for the two. <laughs> that means you get two of them. So make sure you go out and you go support. The, the show is amazing. Season two is coming out on Thursday. So make sure you're in the number to go watch it. Um, but one thing I have to say is we are, everything does come to a close. So I have to call yes. my favorite person. And that is Cletus. So, Cletus, can you please come in the room and set the room up? Hey, Amen. Ah, there you go. That's what I'm talking about. So, everybody, you guys heard it here. Make sure you go follow Anointed Radio on all social media platforms. If you missed this interview, guess what? You could be able to hear it on all of our podcast platforms as the playback will be posted on Friday. So actually, I might even do it on Thursday so that you can even hear about it. And then the release will be on Thursday, too. So I'm going to just post it on Thursday. So everybody can go to the podcast and listen to this whole interview. And we'll promote it all day and talk about it and promote about season two coming. And um, you could check us out on every social media platform and every podcast except title because Jay-Z be hating. So. Until that change, that's what it's going to be. But you can go ahead and check us out on iHeartRadio, Pandora, um, everything. And I believe... Oh, y'all over all over the place, too. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. We all <laughs> over the place. This, this interview going to go go all over the world. So okay. if, if, if you want to hear the playback, make sure, and or if you're listening to it, make sure you um, subscribe, rate, and follow Anointed Radio on all podcast platforms. So when new episodes come out, you know it's there. And we've reached almost 200 and something episodes. So you could binge off of all the Anointed Radio. And you'll always, I promise you, you'll always find a gym or some type of motivation that will get you through the day. Amen. 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 So Amen. with that being said, I want you to know that God has more for you. Never mm. be scared to move forward because this mm. year is the year of leveling up and that while you're leveling up, make sure you maintain the balance that you and God created in 2020. Amen. 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 See y'all next week. Bye.